we sometimes need to manipulate expressions with multiple cross products in vector calculus. That is annoying, and especially if you write it out in component form. We now have our integral notation though, which will help us to do this manipulations a lot faster. Especially because we have an identity for the product of two epsilon symbols, which you will get if you have multiple cross products. In this video you will learn this identity, you will learn how to memorize it and how to use it. Furthermore, we will see a short proof, so you will see uh, why this identity holds. Let us take a look. So here we have our two epsilons. Epsilon ijm times epsilon klm. So we are summing over the last index m. And this product can be simplified with only a few Kronecker deltas as follows. It equals delta ik delta jl minus delta il delta jk. And then, first question, how to memorize this? Because learn this one by heart. It's used a lot, so it's good to know it by heart. So how do we memorize it? It looks like a lot of indices. And then we are going to prove it. So what you do, first you want to make sure that your repeated index is put last. You can always take care of that. And then uh, you, you know you get some delta delta minus delta delta. But which ones? Well, you have first first times second second delta i uh, k times delta j l minus first second second first in this case delta i l delta j k so that's how i memorize make sure repeated index is put last and then first first type second second minus the mixed one first second minus second first okay let's do an examples uh, so if we want to simplify this one, epsilon pqr, epsilon rst. Well, first of all, you want to get the repeated index last. The repeated index is the r, so you want to uh, change the epsilon rst. And now you know you can put this one last and then shift the other one in front. So epsilon rst equals epsilon str. So then we know that our epsilon pqr Epsilon RST equals Epsilon PQR, just copy that one. Epsilon STR equals first first, epsilon, that is delta PS times second second, delta QT minus uh, first second, uh, delta PT times delta QS second first. And there you go. So that is how I memorize it, and for me it works like a charm. Now, how to prove this identity over here? That's at first sight a bit annoying. You have the i, j, k, l, m, a k and l's, and they can all take the values 1, 2, and 3. So you have to show that the left-hand side is the same for the right-hand side for all the options. Now, how many are there? 3 for i, 3 for j, 3 for k, 3 for l. So I have 81 options. So for every combination, you would have to show that left equals right. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 3, uh, and so on. Ah, uh, that's probably not the smartest way to do this. We can do it. Let's try to think about it a bit smarter. Well, you have your i, j, k, and l, and they are either 1, 2, and 3. So for example, i equals 1, j equals 2, and k equals 3. Then the l has to be one of those three. The l can be something else. So you will always have your four indices, which are 1, 2, and 3. You will always have at least two of them that are the same. So either you have that your i equals j, or i equals k, or i equals l. Or, if that's not the case, uh, uh, you can have j equals k, j equals i, but that's already case 1. Or j equals l. Or you can have k equals i, which is already covered k equals j, which is already covered, or k equals l. So in fact you have six different cases uh, to consider. And of course, um, uh, if, if all indices are the same, then they fall into all six categories. 
uh, so you have some overlap between those six categories, but if you prove this within for each of those six categories, you're done. So at first times it seems you're doing a bit more because there is some overlap in between the categories. However, every category by itself can now be done very fast as you see. For example, case one, i equals j, and case six is similar. So I'm not going to do that. I'm leaving that for you as an exercise. So uh, we do case one, i equals j. Now for the uh, left hand side, uh, we have our epsilon ijm, epsilon klm, but i equals j, so you have epsilon iim. So the two indices are the same, and if the two indices are the same, doesn't matter what you're doing, uh, your epsilon symbol is zero. So case one, left hand side is zero. What about the right hand side? So we couple the copy the right hand side, uh, delta i k delta j l minus delta i l delta j k, we know i equals j, so the delta i k becomes a delta j k, and the delta i l becomes a delta j l, uh, and then we carry out the sum, here we have a delta k l, and here we get a delta i k, so a delta k l minus delta i k, those are the same, so we have zero. So in case one, Left and right are uh, zero, uh, whichever choice we made uh, apart from the i equals j. So we covered everything now. If i equals j, uh, the identity holds, regardless of all the other stuff. Case two, i equals uh, k, and case five is similar. Now I have to split uh, the left hand side in two cases. Either j is equal to l or j is not equal to l. And see what happens then. And we can do the right hand side straight away. Now, if uh, uh, j equals uh, l, then our uh, left hand side, epsilon ijm, epsilon klm, uh, then we have i equals k and j equals l. So the first one becomes epsilon klm. So we have epsilon klm times epsilon klm. So what happens uh, if we uh, uh, start to sum this up? Um, well, if the, the, the uh, k, uh, k and L and M uh, are uh, uh, all different, we always get a 1. And if, uh, say, K and L are the same, then we'll get a 0. So how many uh, different options do we have? We have a, a 1, 2, 3. Uh, we have a 1, 3, 2. Uh, we have a 2, 1, 3, a 3, 2, a 2, 3, 1, a 3, 1, 2, and a 3, 2, 1. Six options, of course. And they are all in the sum. Uh, in, those, uh, in, in those six options, the epsilon symbols are either 1 or minus 1. But because you take the product, you always get a 1 in the sum. So you have a 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 6. That's for the uh, left hand side. Now, if j is not equal to l, second option, then your left hand side becomes epsilon kjm times epsilon klm. And now we look at the two epsilon symbols. In order to get something non-zero, the three indices have to be different. So the k, the l, and the m have to be different in order to get something non-zero. For example, 1, 2, and 3. Now, if, you're, if you have this case, 1, 2, 3, then your uh, k is 1 and your m is 3, then for this first epsilon symbol, in order to cut something non-zero, you would need j equals 2. Otherwise, your first epsilon symbol is 0. However, your condition is that j is not equal to l, so that cannot happen. So, what, uh, so whatever you do, you cannot have three different indices in the first and in the second. So you will always have that uh, whatever you do, uh, two indices are the same in one of the two, so you end up with 0. That is for the left hand side. So uh, for i equals k and j equals l, you get 6. And if i equals k and j is not equal to l, you get 0. Well, let's take a look at the uh, uh, right hand side, delta i k delta j l. Uh, we have i equals k, so you get a delta k k times delta j l. And uh, for this one, you get a delta k l times delta j k. Now, delta k k, uh, you know, is 3, so you get 3 times delta j l. And you can uh, uh, simplify this one uh, by summing over the k to a delta jl. So 3 times delta jl 
minus delta JL yields 2 times delta JL. Now we see if, delta, uh, if J is not equal to L, this is 0. And if uh, J happens to be equal to L, you get 2 times delta J, J, J and you get a 6. So the right hand side also in this case equals the left hand side. That's case 2. Ah, case 5 is similar, you can do that one yourself. And the final one we will do here, case 3, I, I equals L, because case 4 is again similar, so you can do that yourself. Uh, again, we have to split in J equals K and J is not equal to K. Um, let's take a look at the left hand side first. So our epsilon IJM times epsilon KLM now becomes an epsilon LKM times epsilon KLM. But epsilon LKM is one permutation uh, away from epsilon KLM. So this is minus epsilon KLM, epsilon KLM. And we know epsilon KLM, epsilon KLM equals 6. So this yields minus 6. And J is not equal to K. Then your epsilon IJM, epsilon KLM becomes epsilon LMJ, epsilon KLM. And again, uh, same argument as in case 2B. We have the two same indices. They bo both have the M in common and the L in common. And because the J and the K is, are not the same, you cannot have that they both have three different indices, 1, 2, and 3. There's not enough space, so you always only have zeros. So that's about the left-hand side. Moving on to the right-hand side. Uh, so we have to compute again our uh, delta IK delta JL minus delta IL delta JK. Now we have I equals L, so the first delta becomes a delta LK times delta JL, that one is just left. And the second one, the delta IL, becomes a delta LL. So what we get, we can perform the sum over L here, gives us a delta JK. The delta LL is 3, so we get a delta JK minus 3 times delta JK equals minus 2 times delta JK. And again, the same argument. If J is not equal to K, we get a 0. If J equals K, we get a delta KK, which is 3 minus 2 times 3 equals minus 6. So that is why this uh, uh, expression holds uh, in K3. And now with these three cases, well, and with the other three, we have covered all 81 cases. So now we have shown uh, that indeed this epsilon IJM epsilon KLM equals uh, delta first first, delta second second, minus delta first second, delta second first.